All right, welcome everyone to Castro Valley High Career Speaker Series. This is our last one of the school year. Um, so we're excited today to have Dash Oliver, who is a Castro Valley High alum. And so um, I will let him introduce himself and share um, some information. And then I'm going to ask him some questions. Uh, we'll go through like a little interview here. So if you want to first just share a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Dash Oliver. I went to Castro Valley. I graduated back in 2009, so it's been a little while. Uh, after that, I went to UC Berkeley. That's where I got my college degree at. And after that, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for a career. And luckily, I was able to find my way into the fire service. And I've been on now for about about a year and a half or so, uh, two years if you include the academy. I'm down in San Jose, so a really big city. It's a lot of fun, but um, don't have a whole lot of information except for whatever questions that you guys may have, but I'm happy to be here and happy to answer anything that you guys may have. Um, and if anyone has questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and we'll be able to ask them. Um, I'm going to start with what was your educational path to this career? So for my educational path, like I said, I went to Castro Valley, grew up in Castro Valley as well. And then after I graduated, I went to UC Berkeley and I got my undergraduate degree there in legal studies. So my initial career that I wanted to get into was get into law school and eventually become a sports agent because I played sports in high school and in college. But by the time I was almost done with my major, I knew that wasn't the pathway for me. I didn't want to become a lawyer or a sports agent or anything like that. So after I graduated from UC Berkeley, I got my degree. Uh, eventually, I ended up enrolling over at Chabot College. So after I got my four-year degree, I went to Chabot, and that's where I started taking their uh, fire science classes over there. And I also enrolled over at Merritt College in Oakland, and I was able to get my, I'll take, I took the EMT course over there, and that's where I earned all the credits for that. And once I finished the credits for that, I was able to go and take the actual national test for the EMT or my EMT certificate. And I just kept taking my fire science classes over at Chabot. And then eventually I was able to get hired as a fire firefighter in San Jose. So that was my personal career path, but there are different pathways to take to becoming a firefighter as well when it comes to your educational background. Great thing. Um, how did you become interested in this career? So for me, I actually didn't know that I wanted to become a firefighter until I would say my mid late twenties. I'm, th I'm 30 years old now. And it was because prior to becoming a firefighter, I was actually working as a substitute teacher uh, in the Bay area. I worked at Castro Valley. I worked in San Leandro, Union city, but I worked a lot in Castro Valley. So I taught the elementary schools, Canyon, Creekside, at the high school as well. But the way I became interested in firefighting was I was working at Canyon Middle School in a PE class. And over at Canyon, you have all the PE teachers. They stay in the same area together in between periods. And there's actually a guy named Mitch Kim, otherwise known as Mr. Kim. He substitutes a lot in Castro Valley, even back when I was growing up in Castro Valley. But I was working with him and he said, hey, what are you thinking about for a career? And I said, well, I was thinking about getting into teaching, maybe don't want to be a lawyer anymore. And, uh, I was thinking about maybe trying to get into coaching at the college level. Um, but that's kind of hard to get into as well. And he said, well, what about firefighting? And that kind of surprised me because I never had any knowledge about the fire service or any kind of public safety job, including police work as well. And he kind of just told me what it meant to be a firefighter. He's like, you're already working in the community right now as a teacher. You're really into sports and being part of a team. And he's like, it's something that you should really look into. So he just kind of became my mentor and guided me on what it meant to be a firefighter. And it really worked out well in terms of what my personal morals are and my values. And I loved it. So I got really lucky that he talked to me and that's how I got into it. So just basically it started with a conversation. So, and that's why I want to be here too, to help start those conversations with anybody who's interested in even thinking about becoming a firefighter, because for those of you who are here or watching this, the recording at your age, I didn't even know that I wanted to be a firefighter. I didn't even know what it meant. I thought it meant going into a building where 
you're it's on fire, but it's way more than just that. You're really involved with the community. So yeah, I just got really lucky that somebody saw potential in me and uh, put me on the right path. So you talked a little bit about your path with like Chabot and whatnot, but mm -hmm. um, what are some of the like typical steps to getting into this career? Um, are there any exams or what kind of requirements are there? Yeah, so there's a few different requirements. So getting a four-year degree is not a requirement from a university or college. It definitely makes it, I think it makes you a better candidate to get recruited, but it's not required. So some of the education requirements, like I said, is first and foremost, you have to at least be an EMT. So you can enroll at courses at Chabot or Merritt. Like I said, that's where I went. You take about, it's about a semester long program. You pass your course there. And then after that, you take what's called the NREMT. And that's a national test that you have to take in order to earn that certification as an EMT. Once you earn that certificate, then you can actually start working in the field on an ambulance as an EMT. And you can also take your fire classes, like I mentioned earlier, but even those aren't necessarily a requirement for all departments. Some departments just really see that as a desirable quality to have that you've taken the courses, but the bare minimum usually is just being an EMT. But there are some departments, and hopefully uh, my friend Sam will be able to join the call later. Some departments require you to be a paramedic as well. So basically the difference between an EMT and a paramedic is that they have what's called a scope of practice. So when it comes to patient care, I can only do so much, but a paramedic, they've had more education and they can do other things. They have a larger scope of practice. So they can actually, let's say, give a patient medicine if they need it. So let's say we need to start an IV on somebody and they start an IV, maybe they need some sugar in their system. That's a fast way to give them sugar. And basically that makes you much more of a desirable uh, recruit to be put into these uh, fire departments. Some fire departments around here only hire paramedics as well versus a big city department like mine. I work in San Jose, Oakland, or San Francisco. They are so large that they can't fill all their spots with just paramedics. So they hire EMTs as well. But some departments only hire paramedics. And just in general, you increase your chances of getting hired if you're a paramedic as well. So basically, you have to take your paramedic prerequisite courses at a local junior college, get accepted into medical, medical school, and go through that whole process until you earn your license as a paramedic. Other than that, there are some other tests that you have to take to be able to put yourself in the recruiting process. So there's things such as the FCTC. That's a exam in California that a lot of departments will pull your test scores from to make you eligible for even being in the hiring process. And there's also the National Testing Network. So it's the same, it's pretty similar to the FCTC, a little bit different though. Some departments pull from the National Testing Network, some pull from the FCTC. It's very rare now to see fire departments put on their own test for you to come in and take. Uh, off the top of my head, I think I did one in Stockton, and then there was one down in SoCal that I took also, but those are the only two departments that actually put on their own test. Everybody else just goes ahead and use the NTN or the FCTC. And departments will have their minimum required scores for you to be able to be eligible. So those would be the main thing is make sure that you have your EMT certificate. I would say eventually try to get your medic license, but somebody like me, I got hired as an EMT, so I got really lucky. And then also take your fire science classes. And then of course you have to take that NTN or that FCTC. And then lastly, there is a what's called a, C, a CPAT test. And that's just basically the physical examination that you have to go through um, in order to get hired as well. And there's, and there's videos of the CPAT that you can look online. You can YouTube it. You'll see all the different types of exercises that they have to go through with the required time to kind of give you a visual idea of what's going on. So uh, yeah, those would be the requirements typically to get into the fire service. And what does a typical day look like for you? What are your day-to-day -day responsibilities? So typically, 
what I would do is I would arrive at the fire station around seven in the morning. So we work uh, two days on. So that's 48 hours from eight in the morning till eight in the morning, two days later. So usually I'll try to get there seven in the morning. So that way I can meet up with a firefighter that I'm relieving. And he or she will tell me what happened during their tour. So a tour would consist of two days in a row or 48 hours. So I'll say, hey, what happened during the tour? And they'll give me an update if they use any equipment, if the fire truck or the fire engine is, if is having any issues, anything like that, or anything important that I need to know. And once they leave, I'll go ahead and put all my gear onto the fire engine. And then basically I'll look through the entire rig and I'll see, make sure we have all of our equipment, make sure that I have everything I need for my medical stuff and also make sure everything is working properly. So we have like saws, different things like that. We'll help, go ahead and turn those on to make sure they're working. Once we're done with that, I'll go ahead and start my chores. So really, it's really important to keep your station clean. So clean garbages, mopping floors, cleaning sinks, things like that to make sure everything's ready to go. And then typically we'll have like a group meeting with my crew. So my captain will pull us together. He or she will give us an update on any meetings that we have to go through or if we have any mandatory training that we have to do sometime during the day and then from there we'll usually go grocery shopping so early late morning we'll go grocery shopping because we pay for all of our own meals we cook all of our meals at the station typically sometimes you might have to go out and buy your food from a restaurant if you're super busy but typically we try to cook and we'll go to the grocery store once we come back from there we'll go ahead and start cooking our our brunch and then from there on we just kind of hang out and do anything else to keep us busy. We have tons of books at the station to help study. We have different classes online that we have to take as well. And then during all that time, we just go on calls, whether that's a medical call or whether that's going to a fire. Uh, we do a lot of stuff to help keep us busy throughout the day. And then, you know, hopefully we try to get into bed not too late, but sometimes you know, the stations can be really busy. So, I mean, I've had days where I haven't been able to go to bed until after midnight sometime, and then maybe only get a couple hours of sleep, if that. And then we wake up for the next day and go through the whole process again. But it's a lot of fun to get to hang out with each other. And it's, it's, been, it's been really rewarding. So that would be a typical day for, for me as a firefighter. How many calls would you say you make in a day? <sighs> So it really depends where you're working. So a big city like San Jose is typically a lot busier than other places. So if you're thinking about areas such as like Fremont would be slower, Milpitas, those cities, they don't get nearly as many calls as we do. And then once you're in San Jose, you can be very busy or you can work in stations that are very slow. So right now I'm lucky enough to be working in downtown and downtown can be very busy. So I think this last tour, so again, a tour for is 48 hours. I probably went on more than 30 calls and that's, that's a lot of calls, you know, and a call can take anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes to, if we go on a big fire, you could be on a call for five, six hours. So a long time. And then you can have your days where you might have 10 calls or if you had a really slow station you can have five or less calls so it just really depends on where you are so for me a typical day i would say i would get at least 15 calls in a tour uh, can you share a story about one of your like interesting calls that you went on there's a lot of interesting calls <laughs> for sure i would say We did have one call where, so when, when you have a big fire, you have what are called alarms. So you have a first alarm, second alarm, all the way to five alarms. So a first alarm fire would be like, it's a smaller house fire or a structure, all the way up to a fifth alarm. That means you're using almost all your resources in the city. You have tons of engines, tons of trucks that are coming. You may even be having help from nearby cities coming to help put out that fire. And we got to a fire and it was a fourth alarm fire. So it was really big. It was a structure with a bunch of, I think, different roofing materials. It was really large. So we, you're not going to go into the building to try to put out that fire. It's too dangerous. So basically you do what's called a surround and drown. So we take off our hose lines. We get there. I go up to the captain. They tell me what they want to say. I want you to grab a hose line, bring it over, and bring what's called a, a, a blitz nozzle. So I said, okay. 
And it's sunny outside. It's really hot. This is about a year ago. And I'm walking. And then as I'm walking, there's all these other trucks that are spraying water from way above. You have these aerial ladders that go really extend. They'll extend about 100 feet in the air and they spray water from above. So I'm walking. It's sunny outside. I'm like, oh, this is cool or whatever. And right as I start walking, I get to where all those trucks are spraying all the water. And all of a sudden, it feels like I'm in a rainforest. And, I, and at that point, I was like, wow, like, this is it. Like, this is a really, really serious big fire because the weather changed like that. Um, so it was really fun to kind of be in that atmosphere. I got to set up my hose line. I got to put the big nozzle on there, set it up and attack the fire. Meanwhile, I have all this water from the trucks just spraying on me. Um, you can see all the smoke coming. So I put on my mask. I'm breathing from my air tank behind me on my back. And you see all these other firefighters coming in and coming out putting water on the fire and everything like that. So uh, it was just kind of fun to be able to see how a large fire operation works. Because like I said, we had a bunch of engines and trucks from all over the city, but then I see uh, Santa, Clara, Santa Clara County Fire Department was there to be able to help us out too. Um, and then I would also say another interesting experience was what's really big and it's already starting right now are the wildland fires in California. And I was lucky enough to be able to go to Napa Valley in the glass fire. I was only there for a few days, but it was really cool to be able to see how, there, I mean, there are fire departments from all over the country and the world coming there to fight those fires. I mean, there was departments from SoCal I never heard of, but there was the Los Angeles County was there. The city from Los Angeles was there as well. And then I see other departments like Hayward, Alameda County, Fremont, they were there too. But it was just this huge operation. I mean, they, they have these portable showers for the firefighters who are sleeping at the actual fire grounds in their tents. Um, and it, would just be a, it was just really cool to be able to see all that come together because you have not just the firefighters there, but you have this, this state puts on a little area to help provide you meals. And there's also a program in the um, prison system where they have uh, prisoners who come out who are able to help us with the fires too as well and you see them going to work and putting a lot of a lot of hard work people help us out too so it's just this whole operation that is just super complex and me being early in my career I had I have almost no idea how any of that works but to be able to see that whole thing get put together was really fascinating so that's one of the good thing about working in a big fire department is you get to go see these big operations that you might not typically see at smaller departments so those are a couple of cool, cool calls I've been on. Of course, there's been a lot of other crazy calls that I probably don't want to go into details about as a firefighter. But um, yeah, there's been a lot of great stuff there. What do you like best about your work and what do you not like about your work? What I like best is anybody will tell you as a firefighter, they love being able to serve, serve the community. And for me, that's big because before I was in the, in the fire service, I've been a volunteer as a coach for football and track. I was again working as a substitute teacher in Castro Valley and other cities around the Bay Area. So I was always involved in the community. So that's what really is fulfilling for me is to be able to help on a daily basis. And there are days where I'm working in downtown and like I said, we'll get 30 plus calls in a tour and you are, you are tired. During, during the time you are very tired, but once I get relieved and I start heading home and I'm driving my car, I have a really satisfied feel, satisfying feeling of I, I did something. I really helped out the, the folks in San Jose and it's really fulfilling. So that's something I really like. I really like to be around a crew. You become a little family because you're around each other for 48 hours at a time. You get to know each other, you get to know your families and everything like that. So you know, have that camaraderie and that family feeling is awesome. And I would say one thing about the career I don't like is that there is a lot of sacrifice. So there's a sacrifice in terms of being with your family or being with your friends, right? You might have to work holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's. Um, we have firefighters who have children, they're missing on birthdays some days. So those are the kind of things that you have to be aware of that you might have to sacrifice. And hopefully you have a family and friends who are able to understand that as well. But the rewards that you get for being in this, in this career, absolutely outweigh any kind of things that come with the career as well. So there's a question in the chat. How many days off do you get after your tour? So for my department, the way it works is we have 40 hours on and we get 96 hours off. So two days on and four days off. 
Uh, but there are similar departments, like I think San Francisco, for example, I think they do 24 hours on and 48 hours off. So they'll do two, one day on and two days off. So it really kind of just varies by where you work. I think Sam's on the call now too. Um, he's really experienced with Hayward Fire Department. I think, I'm not sure if they're doing the two days on, four days off, but I know that they used to do, I think it was called this Kelly schedule. Um, Sam might be able to go a little bit more into detail about that, but it, it varies by where you depart, what department you work in. But in general, I probably work about nine to 10 times a month unless I get what's called a mandatory overtime. So let's say they are, they have some vacancies and firefighter spots. They'll go ahead and mandatory and put me in there. So I'll have to work like an extra day or extra two days or whatever it may be. So um, Sam, with the Kelly schedule, do you know, remember how it worked for Hayward? You're muted, Sam. <laughs> Sam, you're muted. Sam, you're muted. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, how are we doing, everybody? I'm Sam. Um, and Sam, um, we're recording so that we can post it for those who couldn't be there. Are you okay with that? Yeah, it's all good. Okay. And, and Sam's a recent graduate from, well, somewhat re more recent yeah, than graduate. me from Cash I graduated in, tw in 2017. So just a few years back, coming up on four years. Uh, but yeah, I work as an EMT right now at Falk, Alameda County. Um, and then I'm in paramedic school currently in Livermore at NCTI. And uh, I did the fire academy at Chabot. I, with Dash, I did EMT at Chabot, and then now I'm chasing the paramedic scene. So, um, yeah. But uh, you were talking about schedules and stuff. I, I think Hayward used to do um, a day on, a day off for a total of 10 days, working five times, but they uh, no longer do that schedule anymore. I don't think there's anybody in the Bay that does that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there yeah. is there people on here asking any questions, Dash? Uh, that was the that was the one of the questions was how many days off do you get um, after working a tour? And I told him it was kind of varies by department. So in San Jose, we work two days on, we get four days off. So yeah. Got it. Yeah. Pretty nice schedule. Definitely. Uh, so Sam, welcome. Nice to see you. Uh, you as well. So uh, would you we've heard a bit from Dash already, but while you're on. Um, what do you like about your career and how did you become interested in it? Uh, yeah, I mean, the career is definitely very rewarding. Uh, I mean, everybody wants to say that they enjoy helping people, which definitely, I definitely enjoy helping people, but uh, the adrenaline rush is for sure a big thing, like the camaraderie with people. And me personally, I don't think I, I like sitting behind a desk is for me. Um, it's really something new every, every single day that we do. Um, whether it be, you know, stat calls, something crazy going on, but there's always something new, which I enjoy. Um, and that's definitely what brings me to it. And then I'll, I want to be a firefighter ultimately. Um, I want to run into a burning building. I know it sounds crazy to say, but that's definitely uh, something I'd like to do. And um, yeah, the brotherhood, the sisterhood, um, it's just, it's the camaraderie is pretty great. And uh, Sam, how did you get involved with Hayward Fire Department? How long have you been uh, volunteering there? Um, so I've been volunteering there quite a while now. I got a couple thousand hours in the books there, um, just riding along. And then uh, I completed my Spo Academy and I was able to do um, a class called Work Experience um, where you get partnered with a fire department. Um, I think Oakland and uh, Fremont Fire, which is where Dash did it as well. And you get a mentor and you're able to ride along, you're able to go on calls and just see how it actually works in the field. Um, and you're able to network with people and maybe you fall in love or, you know, you get hired with that department. It's just definitely a great opportunity, I would say for sure. Um, for either of you, what are some, uh, so I guess like that's one way to start getting connections is through like the work experience class. Um, what are other ways like effective approaches to job search or how to look for, you know, making those connections to, to get their foot in the door? Um, I would say, especially in high school, uh, being in Castro Valley, I believe Alameda County Fire Department has an Explorers program. 
So usually they'll take individuals who are interested in the fire service and they could be anywhere from like, I don't know, maybe 15 years old to like their early twenties and they can be an explorer. And basically what that means is you'll basically be a volunteer for the department. They'll help train you. They'll give you more knowledge about what their fire department is and what they do. And you can also maybe even uh, meet a lot of different folks in the fire department as well. So I know Sam and I have a couple of buddies from our Chabot Academy who are explorers in Fremont and they were able to get a lot of training with those guys over there, those men and women, and they were able to make a lot of connections with them as well. And the significance of that is if you want to get hired, it's a resume builder first and foremost, but also it helps you lay a foundation for your skills as well and gain a better understanding of the fire service. It's a good way for you to be able to see, hey, is this a career that I'm even interested in and would want to be involved in? And if it's not, then you know right away it's not versus getting into the career and end up hating it. And then you have to find a way to, to basically quit, right? But it's a great way to be able to build your foundation through the Explorers program, be able to meet, meet people. And then also just, I would say, at our classes at Chabot, right, Sam? We had, our teachers were captains, they were chiefs of different departments. Yeah. And that was a way for us to be able to meet them, right? And Absolutely. And one thing just to add on to you, um, talking about the Explorers and the, um, the Reserve program. Um, so I, I currently actually have an interview with the Reserve program for Alameda County in a couple of weeks. Um, and like Dash said, you're going to be able to network with so many people with that, that with that opportunity, uh, helping work their events, like their pancake breakfasts or their walks for fundraisers and stuff like that. And, uh, you're going to be able to, like I said, he's saying you're the, the amount of people you'll be able to network with and, you know, Dash works for San Jose. And then, you know, somebody in San Jose knows somebody from Oakland, you know, and you're able to, you know, network just incredibly through that. And uh, yeah, I agree with that. And Fremont, our buddy was an explorer in Fremont. He's now an Alameda County firefighter in the academy there. So definitely like, you know, reach out to people and, you know, even fan members, don't be, don't, don't hesitate. Don't be afraid to, you know, at least say hello to a firefighter or something. That's, that's definitely true. So one thing in the fire service, you have to be able to talk to people. And for me, I'm much more introverted and more reserved. And I really had to learn how to be able to open my mouth and ask for help when I needed it. So we had a chief, Chief Przbrowski, who's a chief over in Santa Clara County. He was a real key role for me when it came to building my resume. And I mean, this individual, he, he would destroy my, my resume, but it was really helpful because I got to see from a chief's perspective, right? So you're at the top of the food chain for the hierarchy in the fire service. He was able to tell me what he looks for in firefighters from his experience, how to make your resume as clear as possible. And that was a huge help. But in order for me to get that, you know, one saying that I learned is that a closed mouth doesn't get fed, right? So you have to be able to open your mouth and be able to ask for help when you need it. And I, like I said, that was something that was challenging for me when I was growing up because I am more reserved and more introverted versus somebody like Sam, he's very personal. He gets along with everybody. He's perfect for the fire service. So that's not really an issue that he's going to have. But for somebody like myself and maybe somebody who's watching this, you do have to be able to talk to people. But that, that just comes with times of being able to learn how to open up and talk with individuals. And at the end of the day, it's going to build your skills. You're going to meet a lot of people. And it's just going to help you with your growth and moving forward in the fire service. Absolutely. Be, un be, uh, be comfortable getting uncomfortable. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. So you mentioned a little bit earlier about like some of the sacrifices you might have to make. Um, mm -hmm. What would you say, uh, how is your work-life balance overall? For me personally, it's been pretty good. Um, I, I live with my significant other um, and we've been together for a while. And I was a student athlete in college. So she, for example, is very used to me being gone for days at a time, whether I was at a competition, a track and field competition or a football game, whatever it may have been. So she's used to me, be, used to me being very busy. So kind of moving to the fire service, it still has its challenges, of course, and it's tough to have that time away but we've been able to kind of be able to get used to that process. And I think what also helps is just being able to have an open line of communication with your family or your friends or whatever it may be, but also being able to find ways to be able to take care of yourself on your days off as well. Uh, making, making sure that you get your rest, but also making sure that you have 
a social life too with your friends and doing things that you enjoy when you are away from work because in the fire service it's really important to be able to take care of yourself physically because you're going to be working for 30 years at least so you got to make sure your body's okay but also taking care of your mental status as well whether that's talking to your friends your family or to a professional whatever it may be um, to be able to help find those balances but definitely having the open life communication with those around you and um, yeah I don't know Sam if you had anything else to to add to that uh, yeah you're you're you hit it pretty much on the head, but for me right now, at least I'm in paramedic school and then I'm trying to work as well on top of that. It's for me right now is a, it's a pretty tough time, uh, just mm. full, full grind mode. Um, and then try to find time on my own. You know, I want to at least work out and like, just like keep that mental health. Yeah. In a good, good, good aspect, you know, but paramedic school is, is no joke. I'm definitely struggling through it right now. And then trying to work on top of that to pay some bills and, you know, live still. So, yeah. but it's going to pay off. You know, it's, it's all a process. You got to trust it. Definitely. You got, you got to have that mental stamina for sure. And before I got hired, I was like, Sam, I was, like I said, I was working as a substitute teacher. I was volunteering as a coach and I was going to school as well. So being able to be able to balance all that is really important. And you're going to have to make those sacrifices during that time. Like where Sam's in right now, there's going to be sacrifice in terms of being able to go out on trips or hanging out with your friends, things like that. But if you have, if you have a goal that you know that you want to achieve, that's the biggest part right there is being goal oriented and having something that you want to accomplish and be able to have a pathway to be able to get there. So whether that's having mentorship or just being innately motivated to be able to accomplish those things, you got to be willing to sacrifice those things in the process, gain to becoming a firefighter. But like I say, even after a firefighter, there are still going to be sacrifices to be had as well. So, yeah. Um, so Josh already shared a lot about like the path to becoming, you know, to becoming a firefighter and whatnot. But um, Sam, do you have any info that you want to add about paramedic school? Maybe why yeah. you chose it and what it's like? And yeah. absolutely, I am sure Dash probably already said most of the stuff about the the step through Chabot and that process. Um, but what people usually, if most people don't know, is they think EMT and paramedics are the same. Um, they're not. So right now, for instance, I'm on the ambulance. My partner is a paramedic. Uh, if we do have a life, like a, any call, I'm going to be able to there to support him. But if there's a call where, you know, for instance, somebody stopped breathing or is a cardiac arrest or been shot, the paramedic is the one that's going to be doing the life-saving efforts, ultimately doing the intubations, doing the IVs and stuff like that. So uh, not that the EMT is not, not helpful at all. The thing like Dash is an EMT and he runs calls every day on the fire engine. and He's there to support his paramedic at the end of the day. Um, one second. Right. Not me. Um, so yeah, the, the paramedic school is is definitely a challenge. Um, you have to become an EMT to become a paramedic. So uh, I did my EMT through Chabot College, um, and then I got hired at Royal Ambulance. So I got in the field running some calls, just taking people home from the hospital and learning how to be a good EMT. And then after about six months there, I got hired at, Fal at Falk right now where I work and um, run nine one calls. Um, and then I'm working here right now, uh, part-time status, and I'm in paramedic school. And paramedic school is about a two-year process. Uh, right now I go to school every Monday, Tuesday. And then uh, once you finish the in-class portion, you have to do a hospital time for 160 hours. And then you have to go do a clinical time on an ambulance with a preceptor, and that's a minimum of 460 hours. And all this is unpaid. So like we are just talking about sacrifice and stuff like that. Uh, it's a hard, I'm, I'm still 21 years old, so I'm pretty young, but uh, it's definitely the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I would, I would say that for sure. It's just sacrifice. And, and right now it's a grind, but like Dash said, you, you have a goal, you want to get it. I, I, I got to get it. Mm -hmm. And, and thing to add on to that too, is there's a lot of people who want to become firefighters too. So Sam is doing the process that a lot of people have to take uh, becoming a paramedic and whatnot. Me, I'm somebody who got very lucky. I got hired as an EMT. But if I were you, whoever's watching this, I would plan on becoming a paramedic. In order to become a paramedic, you want to make sure that you are a really good EMT because that's your absolute foundation to becoming a good, strong paramedic. Because once you get hired by the fire department as a paramedic, they'll put you through an accreditation again to make sure that you know what you're doing as a paramedic. So like I said, I think you have to have like 10 advanced life-saving type of calls. And if you, and 
if you show that you don't know what you're doing, you will get fired for that. So what Sam's doing, he, he's doing it perfectly. He's gone to the ambulance. He's been working a lot of hours there. Me, I probably took a different pathway where I got hired without any ambulance time, which is pretty unheard of, which is, which is great for me. But at the same time, there definitely was more of a learning curve once I finished my academy in San Jose and was actually working as a firefighter. I had to learn all that stuff on the fly. So I really wish that, you know, it was great working as a substitute teacher, but I really do wish I got that ambulance time like Sam is doing to really build that strong foundation. I mean, even just learning like the lingo of things because there, there's, stuff in, there's stuff in EMT class or school that they don't teach you. And once you get onto the line, you'll, you'll learn different pieces of equipment that your paramedic might require you to know. And I'll be like, hey, I never even saw this in EMT school. So it's very, very important for you to once you get that EMT certificate to get onto an ambulance right away. Don't be like me and get hired without an ambulance time. It can, it can work, but it's going to yeah. be a lot more challenging. And yeah, just, you know, everybody, everybody's pathway is different. That's for sure. Everybody goes through their struggles and does their own thing. You know, me and Dash both have gone through our struggles, but you know, Dash, he, he went one way to college. He played ball, you know, got his degree. Like, you know, everybody's pathway is different. So, you know, not saying that our pathway is right or wrong, but everybody does things, you know, differently. So, you know, chase your dream, you know, do what you want to do and let that pass take you where you want to go, you know? Um, speaking of past, Sam, did you go straight to Chabot for your fire EMT classes after high school? Yeah, as soon as I graduated from Castro Valley in 2017, I left and I went to Chabot and I did all of my fire classes and uh, then they did the fire academy and the EMT. Can you see me? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, the, the thing that makes this uh, me and Dash, like the whole, the picture or like this full circle is uh, in, when I was at Castro Valley is Dash was one of my football coaches actually. Um, so we, then we went through the academy together and took all our classes together. So we became pretty close. But uh, it's pretty full circle. And he was actually my substitute teacher at Castro Valley High, which is super funny. <laughs> and, and that's the thing, too, is in the fire service, there's so much diversity, right? And in our Chabot Academy, we had – Sam was 19, I believe, at the time, right? He yeah. was 19, and he had individuals like me who were in their mid – and we had some mid-20s and some people who were in their late 20s. Whereas in San Jose, again, we had individuals who are 21 years old and then our oldest recruit in our academy at San Jose was 45 years old from Peru. So the, the scale is all over the place. So I never imagined that when I was coaching Sam, that he'd be one of my really good buddies after we went to Chabot. But it, it really, once you go through the, the fire service, even at the Chabot level, it really bonds you guys as friends and family. And, um, you know, I'm really happy that I was able to get to know him beyond just coaching, you know, because yeah. back then, honestly, I looked at him as a little kid, you know, <laughs> but now I look at this guy like he's, he's one of my brothers for sure. So um, yeah, you just, you just never know who you're going to meet and who you're going to work with. So yeah, it's a fun experience. Absolutely. Um, so again, we can take questions in the chat, um, but in the meantime, um, my last question for you guys is what advice would you give your high school self? For me, uh, back in one thing I would tell myself, or a couple of things I would tell myself, is to be more personable. <laughs> I was I was so reserved and so quiet that I didn't allow myself to get to know other people. I didn't let other people get to know me. That was just my personality. But I wish I tried to step outside of my comfort zone by being more personal and more extrovert be able to talk to people because you need those skills not just when you're working with people in your fire station but you're going to go on calls with strangers and you got to be able to talk to them so I would tell myself don't be so cold I guess be more like Sam who's very personal he'll talk to anybody no problem and I would tell myself hey you know think about a career beyond just sports because like I said I thought I was going to be a sports agent I thought I was going to I thought I had a chance of becoming a professional athlete Sorry, yeah. and um, but just tell myself, Hey, like look at other careers beyond being in an office or, you know, being on the football field or whatever it may be. 
And um, just to keep working hard and keep your head straight, because I'll tell you this is if you do get hired by a fire department, they're going to do a very, very thorough background investigation on you. They're going to want to know where you grew up. They're going to know where you went to school. They're going to want to know who your boyfriend or your girlfriend was. They're going to want to know your family history. They're going to want to know, have you taken any drugs in the past? Did you get in trouble with the law before? Things like that. So I would tell myself, and I, I had my head on straight, of course, in high school. I tell myself, stay on that path. Keep working hard. Keep your head on straight. Don't get deviated somewhere that's bad. Don't Make sure you have, surround yourself with people who are going to be a positive influence in your life. So those were a couple of things that I would tell myself back when I was in high school. Uh, me, on the other hand, yeah, like Dash said, I was kind of like a super outgoing person. Uh, uh, I think the biggest thing with my generation and the generation for me, I'm still young, like most of these kids in high school, is social media is uh, you really, really, you can't, you got to watch what you post because like Dash said, they're, they're going to find it. It's, it's going to come up. Um, mm -hmm. Not that I ever posted anything like terrible or anything like that, but something that you would think is nothing is is going to make and say somebody else doesn't have that in their background check, but then they see you that it's, it's going to be a red flag. You know, even if you did it when you were 17 years old, they're going to be, they're going to pull it up. And why, why'd you do this? What, what were you doing here? And then I, I was never like the best student. Um, test taking was always a struggle for me. Um, I would just say like, use your resources to help you because they're there. Um, like counselors and stuff like that, you know, to, if you're struggling, you know, don't be afraid to ask somebody for help. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I never was like a straight A student and stuff like that. And I definitely struggled with testing and stuff. But I um, think, you know, just use your resources while you can, like, but also enjoy your enjoy your time. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're only going to be in uh, high school, you know, so well, have fun and learn, learn what your tools are, too. I mean, physical tools, tools. I don't know how many of you know the difference between a flathead screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver, but there's a whole lot of tools that you got to become <laughs> familiar with. So don't be afraid of learning more about the trades, even if it's plumbing, things like that. Learning how to do a blue collar job and working with your hands it is a blue collar job. So you got to learn all your tools. And me being a millennial, I'm not sure, Sam, are you Gen Z or are you considered a millennial? Z. I'm not sure. So, Gen Z. <laughs> so being able, I was not very familiar with tools at all. I had to learn all that once I started getting into the fire service. So learn some tools or even do a Google search on tools that are used in the fire service, learn them and just become familiar with them just so that you're better prepared for the fire service. And like Sam said, you know, just make sure you're, you're, you're trying hard academically because once you get into an academy, it's very demanding physically and academically. We're not just learning how to put up ladders or how to pull a fire hose. They're going to be giving you weekly tests, maybe even daily tests, not just on fire stuff, but on medical stuff as well. So you have to be able to be prepared academically as well. So don't slack off in high school. Make sure you're preparing yourself for college, whether that's getting a bachelor's or going straight to Chabot College for your fire science classes or getting your EMT, whatever it may be. Build that foundation now and those skills so that you're prepared for that next step. Um, and last question from the chat. What do you see for yourself and your work in the upcoming years? Um, well, like I said, so for us, we have to work until we're age 57. So for me, I got hired at 28, but I'll probably work a full 30 years. So I see myself really trying to get more involved, continue to learn as a firefighter. I really want to get involved with the training aspect of the fire department. So we have a whole training facility and when we have recruits come in, getting more involved with the academy and help building their skills as well. And just trying to get involved in the community as much as I can in San Jose. Um, it's a little bit tough right now because I moved out to Sacramento, but I would love to get more involved with San Jose itself. And then eventually one day, I don't know how many years, kind of depends, you know, where I'm at with my family life, how I am physically, if my body is holding up, but eventually want to be able to promote to become an engineer. So an engineer is an individual who drives the apparatus, so an engine or a truck. And then maybe one day, many years down the road, maybe become a captain. Of course, there's also a, the ability to become a, a chief as well, but that's way, that's, that's out of my sights right now. Right now, it's just trying, trying to become the best firefighter I can within, you know, I guess if I'm putting a number on it, 10 years, right? I don't know exactly, but just taking each day and trying to make the most out of it and trying to become a better firefighter that I can. So 
that's kind of see where I see myself in the next few decades. Uh, me, on the other hand, I, I see myself becoming a paramedic in the next year. I, I sure hope uh, it's definitely going to be a grind. Uh, I see myself reaching some fitness goals, you know, keeping up with that, running all the time. Uh, and, you know, maybe hopefully be a firefighter in the next year or two. I mean, that's definitely it's in the horizon. I know I just got to keep at it. Um, but, yeah, and just keep keep it healthy, keep keep my family good, and just keep working hard. Thank you both so much. This has been amazing. Um, for everyone watching, thank you. And reach out to the Castro Valley College and Career Center if you want more information.